it's time for maintenance. And I figured, you know what? You guys should come along with me and we can talk and catch up. How's that? Okay. All right. Uh, pretty much what I'm doing tonight is strictly with all of these different succulents. They are either in water culture and they've been for a long time. You guys probably, if you've been following, you've seen them progress or just kind of thrive in their water culture. Some are also in semi-hydro. Uh, particularly lava rock, but I also do have some acrylic yarn here and some pond. And I'm looking to see if there is any LECA, but I don't see any LECA. So it's pretty much just lava rock, acrylic yarn, a little one with pond and, uh, and water culture. All right. So I'm going to, uh, I took one of these out because uh, I wanted to take a look at it. And I said, oh, it's a perfect opportunity to work on this with you guys. So we have some dried leaves, and again, I've been letting these dry out. And since they're succulents, they, they don't mind as much, but, uh, but that's why we have so many dried leaves here. So I'm just going to take off all the dried leaves. I'm also going to be looking for pests, and there is one over there that we're going to get to that has mealybugs. I have it separated right now. I'm going to spray it down. Um, and keep it isolated because it should be in quarantine. Mealybugs love succulents. They love everything, really. You know, they just get into everything. So, um, so yeah, this this whole ex this started out as an experiment, growing succulents in water culture and water, just plain old water. Um, I don't even put much fertilizer in at all because you know they're not heavy feeders. And look at how beautiful. Make it closer so you guys can see. Like these, these plants have done really, really well. Uh, granted, they're in a south-facing window, so they are getting all the light that they need, and they're just so cool. Look at how cool they are. The nice root system. Um, I filled this up with water. This is the um, the vessel it was in. This is an Echeveria fabiola. Okay. So I looked at it. I didn't see any bugs, but just to be on the safe side, I'm spraying alcohol. Okay, let me get this closer so you guys can see. Just gonna spray some alcohol in here. Um, again, not completely necessary because I haven't found anything, but I'm doing it as a precautionary measure. So that's one. Let's see what else we got. We'll do the water culture guys first, okay? Look at this, you can see this is dried out so much, the water level was down here. Um, so of course that made some of the leaves dry up. Let me use my tweezers to get in the little spots my fingers can't. These tweezers are amazing. They're very, um, they're very, I don't want to say sharp, but they get very, very pointy and small at the end, which is perfect for reaching into small areas um, to pull off anything that you want to remove. This one looks good too, and I don't see any bugs on it, but I'm also going to spray this one. This one's low in water, so I'm going to fill this up. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rinse this out because it has algae in it. Yuck. So let me do that quickly. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Not all of the algae is gone, but most is. I have my fresh water here. I'm gonna just fill it up all the way up. This is so great because when you have like regular tropical houseplants in water culture, you always have to monitor. You have to make sure, even in semi-hydro, anything like that, anything other than soil, let's say, because that's that's primarily how I grow. Um, you have to constantly monitor for tropical plants. You gotta monitor the water level, make sure it doesn't dry out, because then they'll just keel over and die if they're dry for too long. These guys, they can dry because of succulents. They live off of the reserves in their leaves, older leaves first, usually, and then they you know work their way up if they need the moisture, but you can catch them way before they're compromised. Like this one was, the water was down here and I usually fill it up here. So it's been weeks that I have not addressed this. I haven't even looked, I haven't seen it because it was behind other plants. And you can see it's fine. It's got a nice tight rosette on top. This one, I didn't have a name. I know it's an Echeveria of some type, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, but look at those roots. Those roots are really healthy. Look at that, isn't that cool? I'm just gonna spray this down a little bit. Make sure I get some alcohol in between the leaves. That one's done. So, um, 
I'm telling you, like I, I've spoken about, let me continue with the water culture. I've spoken about how much I love growing succulents either in water or semi-hydro because they, I actually can grow them because <laughs> in soil, eventually they, they tend to decline on me. Either you water them too much, they stay too waterlogged or the soil has a lot of bacteria and fungi, whatever the case may be, they don't usually work out for me. Uh, this one's completely dried out. The root ball is completely dried. You can see it was sending out some aerials. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. It was looking for water, completely dry. Like this is crispy. So this plant is gonna be very happy. Once I fill this back up, let me just check and see if there are any leaves that need to come off. No, no, no. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna put some water in and then I'll spray it. But this one was pretty easy. I can't believe I forgot about it for this long. So there it is, looking good. This is another Echeveria, but again, it didn't come with a name, so I'm not really sure. Sorry, I'm out of the frame. So I just spray it with alcohol, and I'm moving them to the counter on the side, just so that I know I'm done with them. This one is Echeveria Persia. This one started to etiolate a little bit. I mean, you could see that there's a really big trunk, but um, some I've noticed some plants, some succulents etiolate quicker. They stretch quicker and easier, I say easier, um, than others. Like even there, if they're getting a lot of light, sometimes they'll still stretch. Like a good example of that is a Graptopetalum, like the ghost plant. That just seems to wanna stretch. It wants to kind of trail. So, um, so I've noticed that some plants, no matter what you do, they're still gonna, I'll take this one off. They're still gonna um, stretch. Okay. These roots are covered in algae, which is not the best thing. Actually, a lot of these roots don't even feel like they're alive. I'm starting over. I'm cutting off the, the roots, okay? I just cut them all off. I'm gonna fill it up a little higher so we'll get some roots a little higher up on the stem and this should be fine. I'm going to leave the, uh, the messy algae in here for now. It's disgusting in there. You know what? I can't. I can't do it. I got to clean this out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me clean this out. And then we should be good. When it comes to my plants, I can't, I can't like do it halfway for lack of another terminology. <laughs> okay. This is better. There we go. So I may have to get just a bigger vessel in general, or I can cut it and start over. Um, you could do so many things with these guys and they're so forgiving. Spray some alcohol just in case there's like one rogue pest on here. I wanna make sure it's gone. All right, moving on, moving on. Okay, the last of the water cultures that are not infected with anything are these guys. If you've been following, you may remember me taking these uh, these are ghosties. I, I believe they're Graptocetum ghosties. Look at the roots on these guys. They've just been in here with water in a south facing window. I completely forget about them. I don't have to fill this up very often because it doesn't evaporate and get um, used up very quickly. But you can see how happy this plant is. Let me see. I can, there we go. You can see how happy this plant is. Um, but I do have to take it out and get rid of some of the dead leaves that are in here. It's like the roots have really lodged it in here as you can see look at that wow hold on i want to bring this closer so you guys can see my phone is not focusing today so um so yeah um i would love to hear if any of you guys have been growing succulents in water or or yarn, acrylic, or in semi-hydro, because this is by far my favorite and the best way that I can grow in my environment. I always got a disclaimer that. Um, it's the best and only way that I can grow these successfully um, long-term. I have three of these ghosties. All three of them need a little bit of attention, mostly just for the dried leaves. See what I'm saying? Got a lot of aerial roots. Take this out so you guys can see it. 
Look at these roots, wow. I took it completely out, but I'm gonna put it back in now. I'm gonna take a look. We have a lot to get through, that's why I'm kind of rushing. I'm not really rushing, I'm just moving quickly through the plants. This one is good to go, okay? And the last of the three ghosties is right here. I got some more of these leaves that I have to take off. Even these I'm gonna remove. I know that it can absorb the rest of this, but let's just remove it. And a lot of times that sparks growth when you remove leaves from these succulents. Still plenty of water in here. The roots are beautiful, look at this. See those roots in there? A couple of leaves in there, I'm just gonna leave them for now. I'll probably come back to these maybe tomorrow and make sure they don't need a change of water for the ones that already have water. All right. So now, we are into the semi-hydro and the acrylic. Let's start with this one. This one was also a no-name, but one thing that happened is I noticed that a leaf fell off, so I left it on top, and look at what happened. It started to propagate. Let me see if you can see that. There you go. See the roots coming out? No plant yet, but it's got those beautiful pink roots. And um, I'm going to keep it in there because obviously it's happy. And this still has a little bit in the reservoir, as you can see. There's water there. But this is a pretty plant. Let's see if I can get a little focused here for you. It's really, um, it's like a grayish pink almost. And uh, it's doing just fine. Let me move this over here. Some of these don't need much attention. Some of them do. This one's in acrylic. This is another type of Graptopetalum, another type of ghost plant. Just one leaf to really worry about. I don't know what this stuff is here, but I'm gonna take it out of there. There really isn't much in here, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of water. Okay. And this one's good. Just give it a little spritz. Kill off anything that might be thriving on there. You know what? I didn't spray the other one. Let me do that. What was I thinking? So, um, so yeah, leave me comments and tell me if you've uh, tried this, if you've been growing any type of succulent. I mean, we always talk about um, like, uh, you know, tropical plants and semi-hydro and things like that and water culture. But for a lot of people, um, and I've gotten so many messages about this, they, weren't, they didn't know it was possible to grow succulents this way. This one's in pond, which just an FYI, I've been using Pond for a while. I don't like it. I'm not crazy about it. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I, maybe I'm just so used to the lava, leca, acrylic that this, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. I can't always tell when it needs um, to be topped off because I can't always see the water level because every all the pieces, all the particles are so close together because they're smaller. I don't like that. I like the larger pieces or the acrylic yarn where you can actually see in the gaps, the air gaps that there is either there is water or there's not. So I'm um, just taking off all the dead leaves here. Um, but I'm telling you, this has been a game changer for me and I know I keep saying that, but it really has because I always loved succulents and I just said, oh, I just wish I could grow them. I just have such a problem growing them. I, and I'd always buy them and then they die and I'd say, why did I do that? They just you know, but now I can say that I know how to grow them for my, my environment in my own way. Uh, these three leaves here I'm going to take off. I'm just going to leave them on top so they can propagate. They're kind of away from the rest of the leaves. So I'm like, why not just take them off? And I'll add just a little bit of water because there's nothing in the bottom little reservoir thing. But again, I don't know how damp or moist the pond is in here because it is dark and the pieces are close together. So I just add a little, whatever. We'll move this over here. This one you guys have seen recently. This is the Neon Breakers. It's doing phenomenally well. Look at how incredible this plant is. It is just beautiful. It's completely dried out. I have watered it recently, but you can, I don't know if you can see, it's completely dried out. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of water, no dead leaves. Oh wait, there's one dead leaf to remove. 
okay? But uh, I had recently reviewed, I like to say reviewed, this plant, so I know it's okay, but it's just worth bringing back into this video because I love it. I think it's really cool. So that will keep there. This is a Graptopetalum bellum, and it's very dehydrated. And it's, I have the double cup method going here. So it's got one cup with the lava rock in it. And then there's a slit that I cut on the side somewhere. Here it is. Where'd it go? Oh, right here. So this other cup is in the reservoir. So it's pretty much dried up now. So I'm gonna give this some water. I gotta get more though. My cup is empty. My cup doesn't run it over. <laughs> All right, I'm coming, I'm coming, guys. So, so this plant can really use a drinky poo. So put that in there. Let's see how high I'm gonna have it. I'll do about halfway up. Okay. This one looks good. I'm gonna spray it just in case, because this one, since they're, the leaves are all close together, the bugs love it. They love to hang out in these plants, and I'm not a fan of that. So I just like to try to nip it in the bud. And this one I didn't spray either. I keep forgetting. Let me just spray this one just in case. Now, the interesting thing is the farina on these plants, when you wet it, it, it looks like it disappears or goes away because um, it gets darker and, you know, because it, it's wet. But when it dries up, the farina... Um, appearance of farina comes back so it won't stay dark like this it'll get that dusty powdery look to it once again all right this is an echeveria jessica yes i kept the name on this one this one's kind of interesting another stretchy this one is a stretchy one um grows kind of like a graptopetalum but apparently it's not it's an echeveria uh, no dead leaves. It's got a dry reservoir. I'm sorry about the light, guys. I know the light is horrible here. Um, so I'm just going to give it some water. And a little bit of a spray. I want to make sure I get in between and underneath the leaves, too. Because, you know, those are all the places that mealybugs love to hang out and have parties. Alright. That one's good. Let's look at this one, another Echeveria. I believe this is Cubic Frost. Um, it gets pink and the leaves kind of fold downward. I don't know if you can see, some of those leaves are folded. Really cool, this one is another one that has grown a, a trunk on it. So it's stretched, but you can see it's not etiolated at the end. So it, it just kind of grows that way, I guess. Um, maybe just, I'm not sure why, but I'm not gonna pretend to know. This still has some water in the reservoir, and if you can see, and there's plenty of roots down there, but I'm gonna give it just a little more, and then I'm gonna spray for bugs. So if you don't have a huge collection, this doesn't have to take very long. This can be pretty quick. Um, this isn't even all of mine. This is just a good bunch of them that I know needed some attention because I haven't checked on them in a while. But um, yeah, okay, this one is uh, another Echeveria. This came unlabeled, but it's in acrylic yarn. And the roots are all over the bottom. You can see them here. Um, yeah, they love the acrylic yarn, especially, um, well, I don't even want to say especially. I was going to say especially when you let the yarn dry out because they get the wet dry cycle. But even when I've kept it damp, they don't seem to mind it. There's no fungus and bacteria in acrylic yarn because it's pretty much, I don't want to say sterile, but it's like it's sterile. It doesn't, it's inorganic. It doesn't have anything that's going to rot or fall apart. Um, this one is very, very happy in its acrylic yarn. And I used a purple, a very light, like a lavender acrylic yarn, because that's the color that this one was turning in the bright sunlight. So I wanted the, <laughs> the acrylic to match the leaf color. Um, this looks good, except there's a little something in here. I don't know what this is. Just a dead leaf, maybe? All right. And now we spray, just to make sure, because I don't want no meal bugs. I don't want no bugs. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, here is another Echeveria. This one's dried all the way. I don't see too many roots down here, but um, probably because it dries a lot that, oh no, you know what? I think I transferred this one recently. That's what I think, yeah, because it's not as snug 
in the lava. So I think this was a recent transfer. And of course I forgot about it. So it's not like suffering or anything, but it definitely can use a little bit of TLC, which I'm going to give it right now. And first I'm taking off the dead leaves. Because we got a bunch. Come on. There we go. Yeah, this one was a recent move into lava. It still has not rooted in, probably because it's so dry, which I'm going to take care of now. But it's a pretty um, pinkish, purplish gray um, type succulent. Let me just water this one nicely so it has enough to re-plump itself back up. And yes, I'm not going to wait for it to plump up. I'm going to spray it because when they are dehydrated, that is when they are most susceptible to the pests. And I've had so many problems when I've let them go too long um, where the mealybugs just go to town, they go crazy and they devour. All right, we're getting close to the end here. This one, I'm sure you guys, if you've been following, you've seen this before. This was in water culture for a long time, but it kept drying up too fast. And I said, let me just put it in some lava rock and continue with its journey. And it's doing nicely. It needs a little to be topped up. But because it dries out so easily, or it has dried out a lot, I have a lot of dried leaves. And one interesting thing, when I just pulled off some of the leaves, there was like a, a, a poof of powder in the air. And I believe that that's probably mealybug, a, mealybug, a sign of mealybug. So I'm definitely going to have to spray this guy. Um, but, you know, I'm spraying them all, so nothing unusual there. Um, for plants like this that have such interesting and small leaves and nooks and crannies, it's really hard to see when you have the bugs. So, in just in my opinion, I like to treat them regularly whether you see the bugs or not because chances are you're going to miss seeing them because there's so, excuse me, so many places for them to hide. And, um, and I don't like that. So, I just, as an offensive offense, um, as an offensive uh, move, I like to treat them anyway, regardless if I see or have found anything on them. It doesn't hurt them, um, but it definitely can help keep things under control, um, you know, if you do it regularly, which of course I haven't been, but I should. Uh, I'm doing it now, so it's not like I don't do it at all, but I should really do it more regularly. Um, oh, and people, a lot of people have been asking, I don't dilute. A lot of people dilute their alcohol, which is totally fine. Um, I've never had a plant suffer from using full strength, 70% isopropanol, um, rubbing alcohol. Never had a problem, not just with succulents, but even with my um, tropical house plants. Nobody really had any issues. I didn't lose leaves. It didn't dry it out too much. Um... They're just, they're fine with it. So I feel like it'll kill them quicker because it's so potent, but it because it's just pure alcohol, it evaporates quicker too. When you mix it with water, it stays on a little longer. So I feel like you kill them quicker and then it evaporates. You know what I mean? And then you do it again, kills them, it evaporates. So I prefer not to dilute um the alcohol before I spray them but of course it's fine if you do a lot of people do some people even put dish soap in it I don't do that either um, for me the reason why uh, the main reason why I don't use a dish soap is because if I can first of all if I can manage it with just the alcohol I, I would rather do that second of all the soap will remove or um, kind of um, bind down to the leaves the farina so you won't have that powdery look to them and for a lot of these plants, that's a big part of their appeal. Like you don't want to take that away from a plant that's no, notoriously known for having beautiful farina um, in their leaves. So, you know, for succulents, at least, I definitely do not like to use the dish soap. I've used dish soap on uh, some of my aeroids if they have a bug issue. Um, again, not as... Um, not as effective, I don't feel. And what I've noticed is when I've, when I've sprayed or dunked or, what, or just treated them and however I've done it, um, a plant with mealybugs or any type of pest, when I've treated them with the dish soap, if you 
don't actually come in contact with the bugs, chances are you'll miss them and you will, and they won't be affected by dried um, soap that's already on the plant from when you treated it. So they'll just go to a place that doesn't have any soap and then they'll start feeding again. So with the alcohol, you kill them quickly if, if it, you spray it on them. I spray them very, very liberally, as you can see. So I make sure that I get as much of it on as I can. But the other thing is you can do this like every day if you want to for a week or two. Um, you shouldn't do it every day for the entire life, the lifetime of the plant. I mean, that's obviously not a good idea. But because it dries so quickly, like as an example, this one I just sprayed, right? It's already dry again. You can see most of the leaves already dry. This one over here, almost already dry. So I like the fact that it dries that quickly. And if I want to spray it again, I could spray it again, like in 10, 15 minutes, if, you know, if there was a problem or if I felt like I needed to. Um, so that's my two cents. I'm not saying that my way is right and everyone else's is wrong. I'm not saying that at all. Everybody, there's value in all different methods, I'm sure. Um, I learn from other people. Now other people are learning from me just from my experimentation. But look at how cool this plant is. This looks like, um, looks like a golem jade or like, um, like a <laughs> coral, like under the uh, coral reef, under the ocean. So really cool looking. This was an import from Korea. Not the, not the container, the actual plant. And it's really one plant all connected, but it looks like multiple plants. Anyway, so yeah, that's my take on, first of all, on dish soap. And it's also my take on using alcohol that's not diluted. This one you guys have seen before, I'm sure. This is a Fred Ives, um, Graptovaria Fred Ives. This one is also in need of a drink. It's pretty dry. I don't have any dead leaves because I had taken them off about a week ago. You can see everything is nice and clean up here. This is another tall grower. It's a large and a tall grower, so I'm not worried that it's stretching or eddulating. The top looks beautiful. It's a, a nice rosette like it should be. So the only thing I'm gonna do is water it and then spray it just to make sure. I've even sprayed, like, you know, the aerial roots here, you can see them sticking out. They don't even, as long as you don't like douse them and then it dries and douse them again, douse them again, douse them again, they, they bounce back. Like it's not like they're gonna dry up and they're gonna be dead. Um, of course, if you abuse the alcohol, then yeah, you're, you're gonna have, uh, you can have issues. But anyway, um, these guys are all done. So that is just an example of my maintenance for these guys for my succulents. Now, this nodulosa, this is a painted echeveria. This has some, uh, it's not horrible, but it's bad enough. It has some mealybugs. So I'm gonna show you how I can tell. First of all, when I look on top, I see the leaf. I don't know if you can see, I'll try to get closer. There's a little white dot there and a little white dot there, a little white dot there. Those are either baby mealybugs or skins or the powder that they make, the waxy powder. And then when I look down underneath, I say, oh, Let's see if you can see in there. Can you see those two mealies right there? I don't know if you can see them. There's two of them on the stem there. So that tells me, yes, this needs to come out and the whole thing, let me see if you can see them in there. It's there, you see them right in there? Let me focus a little bit better. There you go. So I'm gonna spray first everything really well. And because I can see them, I wanna take them off. Where'd they go? Here they are. There's one and two. Can't see it now. They turn pink when you, uh, when you spray them with alcohol because the waxy coating gets ruined and they're no longer waterproof and it sticks to their body and the, the, the fur, I guess it's like little hairs. And that's ultimately what helps kill them. So I'm gonna clean up the tops of the leaves that had those white pieces just because I don't wanna see them. And if I do see them again, I'll know it's something new because I'm cleaning them off now. So it wasn't too bad. Um, I'm gonna check this one again, probably tomorrow, just to see 
if I see anything else that was hiding somewhere that I missed, um, because that always happens, you know what I mean? But it wasn't too bad to begin with, so this plant's gonna make a full recovery. This here, I don't know if you can see, see this leaf right there? That is feeding damage. When this was a baby, baby leaf in, in, the, in the middle, before it actually grew out to this size, there were mealybugs in there and they stunted the growth of the leaf. There's another leaf here that has the same issue and this leaf too. That's another sign that you have um, an infestation of something. This is already dry, look at that. The leaves, the top of the leaves are already dry. I don't see any more white, but I'm gonna spray it again because this one's a definite for mealybugs. I'm gonna leave it here. Now I'm gonna change out this water. <laughs> look at all the, uh, when I shake it up, all that is algae. Now, to be completely honest with you, a little bit of algae, I don't mind. And I kind of feel like it has a, a, an interesting symbiotic relationship where the algae makes its own food from the sun because it, it uh, photosynthesizes. And I just feel like, well, it seems like they're benefiting from whatever these this algae is making to survive. It looks like the plants are surviving on it um, or benefiting from it in some way. Now, when it's too much, like the other one that I just started over, it was suffocating the roots. It got really slimy. And that's why I cut those roots off and I started fresh because that was too far gone. But a little bit of, of algae, I don't think is a major deal. As long as it doesn't get out of control. Just cleaning this out. And then we will be done with this video. Back into his little water culture vessel. Ta -da! Beautiful. And this was a cutting I had taken off of a larger nodulosa because I have a bigger one. Um, and it's interesting that other one is in semi-hydro, but it also has mealybugs. So I guess there are some plants that are more prone to it. Maybe they taste better. I don't know. But um, look at all this. I want to compost this and make, uh, make soil out of it. I'm kidding. I don't use soil. Anyway, <laughs> that is it for this video. Um, please comment, leave, them, leave a note if you have been experimenting with your succulents and semi-hydro or water culture or acrylic yarn, because as you can see, they all work. And it gets me so excited every time I do these videos because I always had problems with my succulents. And now I'm like, I have a beautiful collection, um, all different colors, shapes, sizes, and they're doing great. So no complaints here. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a video, and I will see you in the next video.